Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today is one of my favorite days of the year. I am going to begin laying out my bonsais on the bonsai deck for uh, spring. And I know it looks like winter out here, but next week we have weather consistently in the 50s and not dropping too low at night. So I'm gonna start with my evergreen trees and get them laid out. I do along here, if you haven't seen the channel before, and then I do along these benches. I just laid some bricks on those benches so snow and wind wouldn't uh, flip them over during the winter. It did happen once right there, but it wasn't too difficult to avert disaster. Hey Carl, so uh, we're gonna first take a look at where uh, the cold hardy trees and then my trees in the greenhouse that's been kept as a cold house at 32, degree, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or just above freezing throughout winter. So that was the goal. So we'll take a look at those and then we'll get to laying them out. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so most of the snow melted. My tarp system over the greenhouse, which was all recycled windows from a house reconstruction. Um, it pretty much lasted. The wind has been intense at times and kind of blew a spot open, but I was like, you know what? It's decent for ventilation and it's getting warmer. Um, so I just needed to keep the trees in here at or above 32. So let's take a look. These are less cold hardy trees or more shallow pots um, that house deciduous trees, you know, things like that. There's some redwoods birches and things of that nature in here, a big pomegranate back there. And then those are agapanthus and large flowering um, plants that go around the property back there. But for the most part, the bonsai is here. My two door system with a space heater in there and a little fan, I think did the job. But we'll see, I guess, this spring if they come out of dormancy. And then here we have our pines and thujas, nice and hunkered down, my cold hardy trees. So yeah, really exciting. Going to, well, I'm gonna have to dig some out, but it's the weekend, so it's time to get some stuff done. All right, so I got the majority of the cold hardy trees up here. So I'll probably rearrange this about 600 more times, but um, got our pine forest over here with some Colorado blue spruce, some thuja behind. It's supposed to be like a, you enter the forest going on a trail or whatever. Around here we have lots of really tightly grown skinny pines. And they grow tall and have these little, you know, um, Pine needle, pine needle tops. Uh, they look like little uh, pine Q-tips. Uh, so that was the inspiration behind growing it like this. And then this is a backdrop of like a thick, you know, thick bush, not necessarily thuja, but just kind of gives you that feel like you're entering into a forest and there's no way out. You're just going into the, the deep forest. It's not like there's an end to this plant thing. That, that was the goal. All right, moving on. This is mainly a pine section. This thuja fit over here, so that's why it's there. Um, and with having this forest here, I feel like it transitions fine. If I ever barbecue, I move this thing up and centered so that it doesn't mess with the trees. So I got my thuja forest. A couple of juniper horizontalis. There's a third one up there. And when shape is so hard to get up next to other trees, it does perfectly in that corner, just kind of going off the deck. Got a nice full-size black pine that I've been growing. You know, five years from seeds, really starting to look nice. Might I haven't, it's untouched. Might have to work on it a little bit this year. Looks like it's getting some lower branches and a nice top little apex canopy, but there's a lot in the middle missing. So, I'm gonna figure that one out. Maybe put a couple of bends in it, turn it into a Japanese garden tree, like taller. It's still all like bendy. All right, so there was one issue. I'm gonna have to spend some money to fix it. 
Um, some of the longer terracotta pots exploded this winter, and if you're going to leave in the comments that terracotta doesn't do well in the really cold yet, well, I know that. <laughs> they were $11, and it looked so cool. I went for it. They survived two years, and they exploded. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, here we have some black locusts. See those crazy spikes? They're going to get a nice hard pruning going into this season. This is a flowering viburnum that's supposed to have pillow-like, cloud-like um, white flowers. It's never flowered for me, but man, if it doesn't look healthy this year. So I don't know that I would prune it. Just, I might just, eh, there might be a couple of little things I'll remove in there. This was a Yamadori um, Verbena, that's Viburnum, this is Verbena. And then a couple of Jim, Dan, Jim Dandy Winterberries. I think that's what they are. Yeah, Jim Dandy Winterberry. So you see the berries didn't make it with their bright color through winter. And they'll just fall off. And these guys kick up tons of these little volunteers. So I'll get rid of those going into the season and probably back this thing down a little bit. This one, I think this is two separate trees. Like this was a volunteer, but it kind of complemented it. So yeah, I might work on that one a little bit too. All right. So that's my hickory topiary. Came from right under these steps. I dug it out when I first moved in five years ago. Oh, five this July. And then I've got another hickory right here growing in the ground. It sprouted up the year, actually two years after, this is two years old, two years after this guy um, was in a pot. So now, because it's in the ground, it's growing faster and catching up. And I'm going to try to make them some sort of matching but not matching hickory topiaries because they really give off a nice light green leafy uh, canopy. It's just beautiful. My favorite. All right. So here we go. These long terracotta pot. It's exploded. You see a round one did here too. So I'm going to leave these. These are protected from the wind and they're in the shade right now. I'm probably just going to go get the same ones. I know you're saying, well, whatever. I, I'm, I'm thinking, Jared number two is thinking, you know, yeah, it's just going to happen again. But the only other option in this style and this shape, which I really like for on the railing, is plastic. So either I switch them into, you know, round or more bonsai like expensive pots, or for 22 bucks, I replace the pots, put them in it, and, you know, they last another two years. So that's my Japanese black pine. This is one of my favorite forests. It's just got such amazing needles. And then. This is a mixture, I believe, of red and Scots pine. Oh, there's a Jap up here. Yeah, this one's a whole mixture. And then there's a volunteer birch in here. So that's fun. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I think that's going to do it for me for today. So um, I'll probably make a part two. I've got tons of these white spruce to prune up this year. 375 of them in total. I will probably prune the majority. So, plenty more to come here on the ranch. Everything's gonna be starting to wake up here soon. So I'm just trying to stay ahead of the game. Uh, <laughs> and from Carl and my family to yours, see you soon, y'all. Cheers.